Yo, today we're talking about Bluetooth low energy beacons and happy bubbles. Can this tech finally let you track things around your house from your home automation system? Let's find out. First, some background. If you don't know what blue if you don't know what Bluetooth low energy beacons are, they're tiny battery powered tags that transmit a signal every couple seconds that says, I'm here, I'm here. BLE beacons go by a lot of names. Most commonly, Apple's trademark, iBeacon, and Google's open source alternative, Eddystone. Technically, iBeacons and Eddystones are different protocols, but they're functionally identical. So I just group them together and call them BLE beacons. Beacons can be used in a lot of different ways to track items and devices inside of a physical space. Each BLE beacon has a unique UUID and major and minor identifier combination. This information means each BLE beacon is unique, and it gives you the opportunity to group them together in logical and useful ways. Despite first being patented in 2012 by an Australian company called DKTOB, BLE beacons first caught people's attention when Apple released their revolutionary paper on iBeacons in 2013. In their published document, Apple talked about how iBeacons can be used in conjunction with mobile phones. Because iBeacons have a very limited and adjustable range, typically way less than 10 meters, Apple envisioned people walking up to a rack of products that had a beacon in it, and then serving you a notification on your phone that said, want more information? Click here. And while it's not a terrible idea, it didn't see huge implementation anywhere except Apple stores. Since then, the technology has kind of floundered, and I would argue hasn't seen much use until the rise of several Kickstarters, primarily XY Find It and Tile. These projects promise consumers small tags that you can put on items you lose a lot, like this flashlight, and then it can be used in conjunction with your smartphone to tell you the last place it saw that beacon slash the item you're looking for. There's also some other cool features like a hot cold search mechanism based off of the BLE beacon strength, and it can sing a little song for you when you get really close and you're trying to find it inside of a room. If you're interested in a full product review of these beacons themselves, let me know. I have them, but for now I'm skipping over it, for a reason I'm about to tell you. The hard thing about BLE beacons is that they're difficult to get integrated into your home automation system directly. To me, there are two cases that would make a BLE beacon useful in a home automation setup. First, it would be nice to be able to look at my home automation hub and see where I left things, like which room I left my wallet in, or where are my keys. And then you would be able to say things like, Alexa, where are my keys? Try under the couch. The second thing that would be really useful is to trigger an automation inside of your home automation setup when a BLE beacon enters or leaves a room. Say I'm walking out the door and Google Home says, Ben, your hair looks great today. And then I would say, thank you. So those things sound great, but the question is, how do you do it? If the only thing that's in your house that can detect BLE beacons is your phone and your phone moves around a lot, how's it going to know which room you're in? Plus, if this is your only detector and you leave, how are you going to be able to look at your home automation hub and say, did I leave my wallet at home? So clearly we need some new hardware and that's where happy bubbles come in. Nemanja, the creator of the happy bubbles was kind enough to send some my way to test. These devices use a node MCU chip and have a BLE sensor and LED built in. The thought is that you get a couple of these happy bubbles and then you put them in different rooms around your house, say the rooms you most frequently visit. Then the happy bubbles connect to Wi-Fi, and when a BLE beacon enters the room, the happy bubbles will transmit an MQTT message that says, hey, I see this BLE beacon. It's pretty cool. Configuring the happy bubbles is really straightforward. First, connect the power to your happy bubbles. Then press and hold the configuration button for about four seconds. You'll know you're in configuration mode when the LED blinks purple a couple times and then turns bright orange. Next, on your smartphone or computer if you have a Wi-Fi adapter, look for a new Wi-Fi network called Happy Bubbles BLE. Go ahead and connect to that. Once connected, open a web browser and go to 192.168.4.1. The first thing you'll need to do once you're connected to the Happy Bubbles is to give it a unique host name. In my case, I'm just calling this one Lab. Then go to the Wi-Fi Setup tab. On the right-hand side, you should see a list of all the available Wi-Fi networks. 
go ahead and select your primary Wi-Fi network and type in your Wi-Fi password, and then click Connect. If everything goes okay, it should say Got IP Address next to Wi-Fi Status. Next, go to the MQTT Setup tab. You'll need to enter the information for your MQTT server. If you don't have this set up yet, check out the video I linked in the card to learn more. Once you enter the MQTT information, go ahead and select Update Server Settings. Then, go back to the Home tab. Next to Wi-Fi status, it should say Got IP Address, and next to MQTT status, it should say Enabled slash Connected. That means you're good. The last thing you'll need to do is to take the Happy Bubbles out of Configuration Mode by pressing and holding the Configuration button until the LED blinks purple a couple times. And, because I will never miss the chance to 3D print something, I did go ahead and make a quick enclosure for the Happy Bubbles. It was pretty simple to make, although evidently I don't know how to work a ruler, and took a lot of prototypes, but it is pretty simple. I put it on Thingiverse and linked it below in the video description. So if you want to print one yourself, you're more than welcome to. It prints super easily without supports and it just snaps together. So check it out. After you get this first beacon set up, go ahead and repeat these steps for each other Happy Bubbles beacon you want to set up. The next thing we'll need to do is to install the present software. I run the software on the same Raspberry Pi that runs my MQTT broker. Basically, what the software does is it filters and then retransmits the MQTT messages that are sent from the Happy Bubble. This might seem kind of weird, but basically, each Happy Bubble transmits an MQTT message when it sees a BLE beacon. Since it's possible for multiple Happy Bubbles to see the same BLE beacon, it takes a little bit of filtering to know which Happy Bubbles your beacon is closest to. So, yeah, it seems a little weird, but basically, you have to have the software to interpret those messages apply a little bit of logic, and then retransmit that MQTT message to your home automation hub. Yeah. Thanks to the awesome documentation on the Happy Bubbles website, which I linked below, installing presence on a Raspberry Pi is super easy. First, connect to the command line interface for your Raspberry Pi. In my case, I'm doing that remotely with some software called PuTTY. Then, type the command cd downloads, with downloads being capitalized, then copy and paste the wget command from the Happy Bubbles installation instructions into the command line interface. Once downloaded, type the command bash presence underscore rpi3 underscore install dot sh and then press enter. This will install the presence software. At this point, presence should be installed and automatically running. However, I have password protection set up on my MQTT broker, so I need to change a couple of settings so it knows what password to use. First, I'll run the command sudo systemctl stop presence and press enter. Then I'll run the command cd forward slash etc forward slash systemd forward slash system forward slash. And then I'll type the command sudo nano presence dot service. Once open, I'll go down to the line called exec start and go to the end. First, I'll type dash mqtt underscore username and then my mqtt username. Then I'll type dash MQTT underscore password and type my MQTT password. Once done, I'll press control X and then Y and then enter. Then I'll type the command sudo systemctl daemon dash reload. Then finally, I'll type the command sudo systemctl start presence and press enter. Now you should be able to access the presence software by opening your web browser and going to ha colon 555. Assuming you have detectable BLE beacons, you should see a lot of things starting to pop up on the All Latest Beacon Seen tab. The next thing you'll want to do is to add the BLE beacon to be tracked by the present software. To do this, go down to the line for the beacon you want to add and click the Add This Beacon button. When prompted, give it a name and then press Submit. After a few seconds, it should show up on the Added Beacons tab. Okay, so the one last thing to do is to set up your home automation hub to interpret the messages from the present software. I'm gonna be showing you how to set up Home Assistant, but you can apply these steps to set it up with whatever home automation hub or software you're using. First, go to the Home Assistant website and go to the Components page. Then, under the Presence Detection category, select MQTT Room Presence. Then, copy the sample configuration and paste that into your Home Assistant configuration file. Now we'll need to change a couple of things. First, delete the last two lines. Then on the device ID line, we'll want to paste the beacon ID that you want to track. You can get the ID by opening the present software and going to the added beacons tab. Then click edit this beacon. It'll say the beacon ID right across the top. 
you can go ahead and copy this and paste this into your Home Assistant configuration. On the name line, go ahead and name it whatever you want the beacon to be called. Then on the state topics line, you'll need to change that to happy dash bubbles forward slash presence forward slash HA. And that's it. Go ahead and create a new sensor for each BLE beacon you want to track inside of Home Assistant. When you're done with all that, you can save your configuration, restart Home Assistant, and you're good to go. Except in my case, it's not quite that easy because I have my configuration file broken up into multiple files, which if you're just getting started out with Home Assistant, I would not recommend. But after you get a lot of things added to configuration, it gets a little bit easier to break it up. If you're curious about how I have my Home Assistant configuration set up, I created a GitHub repository and linked it below. So feel free to check that out if you want to know more. Once you have your Home Assistant configuration squared away, go ahead and restart Home Assistant. If everything goes okay, you should see a couple badges pop up in the UI that say the beacon's name and then where it is. I'm not a huge fan about how that looked, so I used the groups component and I made a quick group to put all of my BLE beacons together. If you want to know more about how to use the groups component, check out the video I linked in the card. Once you have your groups component set up, you can go ahead and restart Home Assistant again, and then if everything goes okay, you should have a pretty card pop up in your UI that looks something like this. It'll have all of the beacons you have set up and then where they are. And then inside of the card, it'll tell you how far away from the happy bubbles the beacon is, which is not super accurate, but it works. Now, you might be wondering, how well do the happy bubbles actually work? I mean, do they actually detect the BLE beacons? Are they fast? Are they stable? Well, to answer those questions, I came up with two tests. The first test I did is I took each of the four happy bubbles that I had and I put one in each room. Then I took four different BLE beacons and I put one in each room next to the happy bubble. The purpose of this test was to see how stable the happy bubble was at detecting a BLE beacon that wasn't moving. Because my house is pretty small and the BLE beacons I'm using have a pretty strong signal strength, it's possible that multiple happy bubbles can see the same beacon and that causes problems. So that's why I did the first test. The data I'm showing right now is historical data from Home Assistant. It's basically where Home Assistant thought a BLE beacon was over an entire day. And keep in mind, these BLE beacons aren't moving. What you can see is that for the vast majority of the time, Home Assistant thought the beacon was in the right place. However, there are occasional blips where it looks like the beacon is warping into another room and then coming back. For the first thing we wanted to accomplish, like asking Alexa where my keys are, this isn't a problem because the majority of the time it's where it needs to be. However, if you wanted to do an automation, this gets a little trickier because now you could have a false positive and basically trigger something when the beacon's not actually there. And that's not great. It's worth pointing out that in the present software, there are some settings you can change to adjust the location confidence. This is basically adjusting how many consecutive pings Happy Bubble will have to see before it says a BLE beacon is in a room. You can make that value really high so you have good confidence, but then it takes longer for the happy bubble to detect the BLE beacon, which if you're trying to do an automation may be a problem, or it may not be. So even though it might take a little bit of futzing to get the happy bubbles to work reliably with an automation, I wanted to test how fast I could trigger an automation inside a home assistant when a BLE beacon enters a room. So I came up with a quick automation to test that. Basically all it does is when I walk into a room and the state of the beacon changes, it flashes a light red. Not very fancy, but it demonstrates the automation capabilities of the beacon. As you can see, with the default location confidence, it's pretty quick. Keep in mind, you'll probably have to tune this a little bit to get it to be reliable, so it'll be a little bit slower. And so I kind of land on the point that using BLE beacons for, say, lighting is going to be kind of tough because there is multiple seconds of delay and sitting in a dark room for that long, it's not cool. But if you wanted to use these to, say, turn on a TV or trigger your computer to turn on or your 3D printer or whatever, they actually work pretty well. My opinion of BLE beacons has been waffling. On the one hand, the Happy Bubbles product is awesome, and it does what it does really well. I mean, you can track things around your house, and with a little bit of tuning, you can do some automations that are really neat. And in fact, it's one of the only ways I know how to do some of that stuff. Despite that, there's one glaring reality to me in all of this, which is all of that is only true for BLE beacons. You can't, or I should say, I can't reliably track my Android Nexus 6P 
with the Happy Bubbles product. BLE beacons and Bluetooth Android devices are different. And while you can get some apps that turn your Android phone into like a simulated iBeacon, I just could not get it to work reliably. I'd tried forever. And for me, when it comes to automations, if it's not like 99.9% .9 reliable, I'm just not that interested in it. So I guess in conclusion, the Happy Bubbles product is awesome. And I would highly, highly recommend it if you want to track BLE beacons around your house. If your thought is to track your phone with it, you might be disappointed, or maybe you can do it better than I can. If you can get your phone to be an iBeacon reliably, please let me know. I'd love to know how you do that. So yeah, I think that's about it for this one. I put a bunch of links in the video description below if you want to know more about how to get some Happy Bubbles, or how to install it, or my Home Assistant configuration. I set up a kit account this week too. If you're interested in all of the hardware I've talked about so far on my channel, or what kind of hardware I use to film these videos, it's all on that website. Feel free to check that out if you're interested. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon, and if you like this video, subscribe and hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That'll send you a notification when I post a new video or do a live stream, if you guys are interested. Um, very much more coming soon. Until then, happy automating.